Many colleges across India are horror stories. There is simply no other way to describe them. On June 2nd, 20-year-old Shraddha Sadish, a student at the Amal Jyoti College of Engineering in Kanyarapalli in Kotem district of Kerala, died by suicide. Scores of students protested. They alleged that moral policing and mental harassment by college authorities led to her death. Unfortunately, Shraddha is one among many students who die by suicide every year due to mental harassment. This is a chronic problem across India. Students, especially female students, are treated as subhumans. Their freedom is stripped away, their dignity is questioned. Even male students are not spared. The outskirts of Chennai is home to scores of engineering colleges. Colleges where discipline is an obsession, sometimes even bordering on the ridiculous. Rules that even bar students from talking to their opposite sex. In 2008, when I was a reporter working with Times Now in Chennai, I had done an investigation on segregation in campuses. On camera, I caught the separate staircases, walking paths, goons slash guards were posted in campuses. It created a huge furor then and the education minister promised action. But over the years, I've noticed that very little has changed. When Shraddha died, I decided to reach out to current students to understand what their problems are and ask former students what kind of harassment they faced. My inboxes are flooded with replies. And in this week's No Filter, I'm going to read out some of these responses to you and you will understand how colleges are run like fiefdoms. More than running colleges and ensuring that students pass out as well-informed and well-intentioned people, a lot of focus in these colleges seem to be on how to separate the girls and the boys, how to punish people who do not follow the rules. A lot of students and former students who wrote to me said that their colleges have separate staircases, walking paths, canteens for male and female students. An engineering student from Sivakasi said that in his college, there are even separate provision stores and fruit shops. A female student from Bengaluru said she was suspended last year for speaking to a male friend. At a nursing college in Tiruvalla in Kerala, the female students cannot even access the hospital canteen. At a college in Coimbatore, this is a pretty big one which is in a beautiful village. It seems like the assistant dean here does not have much of work because he goes around the campus trying to spot female and male students sitting together. According to a former student who studied in the same campus, the hostel warden here uses the torch as a weapon to disperse people. In an engineering college in Trishur district, girls cannot speak to boys. In fact, the management does not even want them to look at boys. So the terrace in the hostel has huge grills. Another engineering college, this time in Kavarapete in Tamil Nadu, apparently did not let their male students sit for a recruitment drive once because a female HR person had come for the interviews. At this point, you must be wondering why I'm not naming these colleges. That's simply because too many people have reached out to me and journalistically speaking, it will take me a long time to reach out to these colleges for their individual reactions. But one pattern I have noticed is that deemed universities, Christian institutions and engineering colleges seem to be the worst. But amongst the hundreds of replies I've got, a lot of them have come from Amar Jyoti College. That's because there is a controversy going on there now. From Kristu Jayanti and Christ College in Bengaluru, RMK Engineering College in Tamil Nadu and Amrita institutions across states. Now to move on to other issues. A lot of students said that their colleges have curfew timings. And these curfew timings are different for male and female students. It's of course liberal for the male students and very strict for the female students. One student said that in their college, the boys had permanent passes while the girls' parents had to ask each time they wanted to go out. Another student said that in their college, when the female students come back from holidays, they had to carry a letter from their parents which said that they were indeed home for holidays. A few students who wrote to me from junior colleges in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana said that they are often asked to show proof when they say they've got their periods. So any student who asks for an excuse to go back to the hostel if they have period pain are asked to show the stains or show their underwear. What can seduce a man more than leggings? Nothing if you ask college managers. From across states, female students have written saying that leggings are banned in their campuses. They are not allowed to enter campuses wearing leggings and if they do, they are slut shamed and punished. In fact, some colleges have problems with students wearing shorts 
inside their own hostels. One student said that in their college, they've been told, don't wear leggings because that can sexually provoke guys. In another college, leggings are not allowed, only patiala pants are. There is also a strict dupatta rule. Dupattas have to be worn. They also have to be pinned properly so that there is no exposure. Weirdly, this rule exists even in women-only colleges, especially in Chennai. Many students have written about how they are slut-shamed for not wearing dupatta with every outfit and not for pinning these dupattas. Male students also have to bear the brunt of these ridiculous rules. The punishment is quite harsh if they are caught violating the curfew or if they are caught speaking to female students. And many of these colleges seem to be obsessed with hair and beard. To the extent that one group, which runs several educational institutions, apparently has barber shops inside all its campuses. And if a student is sported with even a tiny beard, he has to go to the barber shop and get it cleaned up. A few trans women and trans men too have written about the mental harassment and discrimination that they face in campuses. One student, a trans woman, said that her college had separate elevators for male and female students. The only choice left for her was to climb the stairs every day to reach her classroom on the 8th floor. There are really many stories like this. I'm now going to read out a few of the traumatic episodes that students have shared. They used to raid our classes and hostels and during these raids, our emails would be read, our messages would be checked, our phones would be confiscated and they would be auctioned. We used to never get them back. During a break I was speaking on my mobile phone, a professor confiscated it. I was a first year student then. I got it back only in the fourth year when I graduated. Once a guy in my college slapped a girl for turning him down, they suspended her instead of him. The management made me cut my hair because I had coloured it brown. You girls will anyway get married. What's the point of teaching you so much, they asked. An auto would take me to the railway station every Friday, which was booked by my parents. But the warden once asked me if I had an immoral relationship with the auto driver and slut shame me. A lot of young women have talked about how wardens, especially nuns, would slut shame them for sitting with other women. If the hostel beds are seen together, the warden would say, I know what your disease is. Doors cannot be shut until the lights are off. And if they are shut, you will be slut shamed. My roommates were once sitting on the bed and watching a movie. The nun came inside and shouted at them saying that, I know what kind of pleasure you get by sitting together. They used to have guards at the college and hostel gates to sniff students to find out if they had smoked or if they had a drink. In some colleges, even the teachers are not spared. There are strict dress codes for female teachers. One teacher told me how they were summoned by the vice principal and given a lecture about male friends they had and what their spouses thought about it. They were also lectured about the kind of clothes, their saris and their blouses. The list is just endless and the victims are many. So many students have described college as their worst experience in life. Former students have said that their mental health was compromised. Many had become suicidal. Those students like Shraddha die every year. Why are things not changing? As someone who's reported on and observed this issue for many years, these are some of my thoughts and suggestions. Deemed universities and private institutions are a law unto themselves. I am not suggesting that government institutions are run just fine, but accountability has to be pinned down. People have to be held responsible. Students should have some avenue to register their complaints and these private institutions have to be taken to task. They must be given warnings. Educational institutions do have the responsibility to ensure that female students are safe, especially hosteliers. But the solution cannot be to imprison them. That is just an excuse to unleash patriarchy. Here, the courts have to step in, as they have done in the past when it comes to curfews and irrational rules. Many of you may not agree with this, but I strongly believe that campuses should have politics. You may not want political parties, but students should be allowed to organize and agitate if needed. Remember, the personal is political and students should be empowered. I would say even teachers should agitate if needed. We cannot afford a society where a bunch of people just decide that they will ignore every kind of injustice. Students are not subhumans. Interacting with the opposite sex is not a dangerous activity. There are many colleges in India which do not have these kind of rules and students pass out of these colleges just fine. These are young adults who vote in governments Give them their autonomy to decide about their lives, interactions and their bodies. But most importantly, parents have to realize that education is not about shutting young people in their rooms, cutting off their access to the world, 
humiliating and stifling them. To encourage this kind of behavior from college managements, to ignore it is just not right and it is not worth it.